following the recent removal of the All Eyes on the Judiciary Billboard in the Federal Capital Territory, the Raisu Yakubu examines the controversy surrounding the action, which has been perceived by some stakeholders as mounting pressure on the Presidential Election Petition Tribunal ahead of the ruling on the February 25th presidential election. Never in the nation's electioneering history has the judiciary courted attention like it is doing presently. Seen as the last hope of the common man, the judiciary has been commended and condemned in equal measure depending on the popularity or otherwise of its decision at any given time since the return to a democratic mode of government in 1999. The issues at the moment are two petitions filed by the People's Democratic Party and the Labour Party and their presidential candidates in the February 25th election, Atiku Abubakar and Peter Obi, respectively. As rightly predicted by political commentators, the presidential race lived up to its three-horse race tag as the trio of Bola Tinyabu, Atiku and Obi breasted the tape in first, second and third place finish in that order with the Independent National Electoral Commission declaring Tinyabu the winner of the poll after garnering a total of 8,794,726 votes to see off competition from Atiku, 6,984,520, and Obi who garnered a total of 6,101,533 votes. However, neither Atiku nor Obi accepted the outcome of the election, citing alleged non-compliance with the Electoral Act 2022, which provides for the electronic transmission of election results to INEC's viewing portal in real time, among others. And despite pleas from eminent Nigerians, including the Sultan of Sokoto, Saad Abu Bakar III, to accept the outcome of the election, both men filed their petitions and vowed to walk the entire legal distance to prove that the election was fraudulently conducted. Submissions, written and oral, have been made by both parties and the election tribunal is now on the verge of giving its ruling. But last week, a dramatic twist occurred when billboards bearing the inscription, all eyes on the judiciary mounted at strategic locations in the Federal Capital Territory drew Nigerians' attention to a sustained pressure on the land justices of the election tribunal to dispense justice on the matter without fear or favor. Before now, Atiku's loyalist and director of planning and strategy of the PDP Presidential Campaign Council, Don Pedro Basiki, had in several media outings called on the judges to remember that the eyes of the world were on them. This was even as he claimed that Atiku's team monitored actual voting nationwide on satellite, insisting that results collated and announced in favor of Tinubu were altered in some states of the federation against the PDP presidential candidates. Encouraged by an army of netizens led by a Twitter, X, group, Violence Space, Obi is convinced that the litany of controversies surrounding Tinubu coupled with identified gaps in the election that brought him to power is enough for the tribunal to either declare Obi the winner or in the alternative, order a rerun. The former Anambra state governor, the only candidate to secure over 25% of votes cast in the FCT, also believes that the failure of Tinubu and Atiku to demonstrate sufficient popularity in the nation's capital places him in the driver's seat to also rock. As it were, the panel is under tremendous pressure to do its job, arguably because in the past, some decisions taken on electionary matters did not sit well with millions of Nigerians. The 2020 controversial Supreme Court judgment that declared Hope Yuzadima as the winner of the 2019 Imo state governorship election readily comes to mind. Recall that in its Nigeria Corruption Index Report 2018-2020, the Independent Corrupt Practices and Other Related Offenses Commission ranked the judiciary top in the ignoble list, with about a 9.457 BN said to have exchanged hands as bribes. In the report, six female judges claimed that they were offered the sum of N3.307 BN, while five of their male counterparts said they were offered N392.2 M, in what the anti-corruption agency said were cases of outright demand and offer of bribes mostly linked to election matters. The report read, overall, the justice sector had the highest level of corruption with a score of 63. The level of corruption in the justice sector was heightened by stupendously high amounts of money offered as bribes to judges by lawyers handling high electoral and other political cases. A large percentage, 73% of justice sector respondents 
did not experience a situation of outright demand or offer of a bribe. Nevertheless, it remains alarming that 16% of respondents had experienced such blatant demands or offers of bribes. Follow-up discussions indicated that the cases of outright demand and offer of bribes were mostly linked to election matters. Money involved in high-level corruption in this sector was categorized into money demanded, offered, or paid. Demands are made by court officials, including judges, while bribe is offered and lawyers or litigants make payments. The total amount of money reported by the justice sector respondents as corruptly demanded, offered and paid between 2018 and 2020 was N9, for 78 respondents constitute 0.7 percent of all justice sector respondents reported offers or payments of bribes to influence the judicial process. Out of the 78 justice sector respondents who reported amounts of money offered or paid, 63 were lawyers. This number makes up 9.9% of all lawyers surveyed in the justice sector. The 63 lawyers that reported payments were mostly male being 69.8%, while their female colleagues constituted 30.2% of that population. In all, the total amount of money reported by lawyers was N5733-986-000. The amount reported by female lawyers was N918-045-000 while male lawyers reported N4815-941-000. Last week, the federal government disbanded the Secretariat of the Advertising Standard Panel due to its endorsement of billboards deemed to have run afoul of ethical values, particularly those with the inscription, All Eyes on the Judiciary. Since the official order to have the billboards removed, Prominent Nigerians have been speaking on the implication of the government's action, with article describing it as authoritarianism and an affront to freedom of speech. There are reasons too numerous to warrant a recap here to justify Nigerians' apprehension of possible judicial compromise in the presidential election petition tribunal. Last week, the chairperson of the Kano National and State House of Assembly Petition Tribunal, Justice Flora Azinj, raised the bribery alarm that there was an attempt to influence a member of the tribunal with money to sway the course of justice the way of the client of a lawyer. In her words, money has been flying in the tribunal. Speaking with Saturday Punch, a senior advocate of Nigeria and human rights activist, Mike Oscombe, said the decision of the Tinubu government to bring down the billboard showed that it was jittery of the unknown. What they did with the billboards is bad for democracy. It is shameful for the government and by their conduct, they showed signs of being jittery. What is wrong with saying eyes on the judiciary? What is wrong with our National Assembly? Eating fat and regurgitating when Nigerians are dying of hunger. Nigerians are angry, very angry. They can't take it anymore. The next weeks and months will be quite testy and demanding. Those who have ears, let them hear. Those who have eyes, let them see. Those who have limbs, let them walk, he said. Sharing similar thoughts on the subject matter with Oscom is rights activist and constitutional lawyer, Mr. Abdul Mahmoud. In his words, Nigerians regardless of the opinion they hold concerning the election, they are at liberty to freely express themselves, noting that such expressions are guaranteed in a constitutional democracy. Mahmoud, who heads the law firm Ephesus Lex Attorneys and Solicitors, Abuja, also queried the rationale behind the federal government's decision to dismantle the billboards because of the message they disseminated to the public on the huge expectations of Nigerians from the judiciary. He said, the directive that the billboards carrying all eyes on the judiciary be pulled down is an executive act taken too far in a constitutional democracy that protects free speech and freedom of expression. What is the harm in the inscription that the government dreads? I don't understand what pricks the scooter part of this government when Judicial Watch remains one of the cornerstones of constitutional democracy.